Hello everyone, welcome to Online Seller UK. Um, I call it podcast, but it's in YouTube, so we should be calling it now YouTube channel, maybe. <laughs> so um, today I've got Matt Anderson from Marketplace Amp. And uh, the conversation today we are going to have is about Amazon DSP. So um, Matt, welcome to Online Seller uh, Podcast. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. Yeah. Excellent. So I think it will be good to start, Matt, about a quick introduction about yourself uh, and we'll take it from there. Yes, uh, my name is Matt Anderson. I'm the uh, MD of Marketplace Amp. Uh, we're a grocery and supermarket our specialist marketplace agency focusing on food, health and beauty products and pets. Um, and uh, I've, I've been selling on Amazon for almost 10 years now through vendor and seller. Yeah. Um, and I'm here today to talk about Amazon DSP or demand side platform. Um, okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, okay. So, I think let's start with quick introduction. What is Amazon DSP? Um, Amazon DSP is a demand side platform, um, and so it's their version of um, display advertising, um, and it means that you can advertise as a as a seller across all of Amazon's ecosystem as well as uh, third-party ad networks as well. Um, so it's a very, very powerful platform that allows you to leverage all the data points, some billions of data points that Amazon has for its customers. So in the UK, you're looking at 41 million uh, users in the UK. All their activity, their purchase behavior, their interactions with Alexa, Twitch, on Kindle, etc. Uh, Amazon's got a very rich data set that you can leverage to target your ideal consumer across the Amazon ecosystem, app, desktop, Kindle, etc., and then also on third-party sites. So, for example, if you're in the market uh, for buying pet food supplements, yeah. um, you can target people that are in the market for pet supplies, and also follow them around the web and target your consumers as well. Okay, so um, you've mentioned about this third party targets. Is it Amazon's got their own network of um, uh, network areas where we can target off Amazon site? Is that what you mean? Well, um, Amazon DSP allows you to uh, connect multiple ad networks across the web. Um, but Amazon has its own Amazon Publisher Network as well, which is its authenticated, trusted network of publishing. Okay. Um, something that certainly a lot of the bigger brands are, are quite scared of is when you're when you're doing display advertising on mass across the web. Yeah. You're not really sure about where your brand is going to be appearing next to, for example, jihadi videos on YouTube or whatever. Okay. Um, yeah. So oh, okay. you want to have some sort of level of protection. So. Uh, Amazon Publishing Network allows you that sort of peace of mind, um, but you can also layer in whitelist publications that you want to actually potentially target um, okay. uh, across across the web as well. Right. Okay. And um, you know, I've, I've, from what I understand, in the past, it's it's a premium service. Uh, it's very expensive. You know, uh, is, is it not everybody's? cup of tea or is it for everyone and what's your take on this well i think that that's true i mean amazon's always changing its acronyms so it's, it was amazon advertising uh, um, aap amazon advertising platform aap yeah and then amg as well previously and that was always traditionally available to vendor accounts larger brands yeah as a, a, a point of difference between seller and vendor mm -hmm. um that isn't the case anymore it's open to seller yeah um and yeah i think there's the, the cost has always been prohibitive so you know if you wanted to run a, um, a dsp um, campaign with an amazon uh, managed uh, person in-house yeah. uh, that would be ten thousand pounds in in the uk or thirty five thousand dollars in in the us minimum spend okay but there are ways of getting around that. And so one, one thing that our agency provides is a, a self-service uh, service that you can actually work through our agency and we can actually work below those minimum payment thresholds and get closer to the data as well. Okay. Um, so um, that's an option now. So 
it's more inclusive of, of everyone looking to sell on Amazon now, and there are ways of getting below those barriers to entry, I guess, uh, uh, that existed before. Right. Okay, excellent. And is it for just seller central users, vendor central users, or is it? Um... it it's, it's for both okay. uh, now, so you, you can actually um, access it by seller, so you can buy the um, Amazon advertising uh, console, mm -hmm. uh, which is gradually been moving away from just with being within sort of seller central now to actually being able to have uh, to work through um, advertising at amazon.co.uk or .com. Yeah. Um, so it's it. Amazon as a whole sort of integrating its entire, the trend I'm seeing is integrating its entire advertising suite into, into portal and we're seeing that sort of move really. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and you think about it, so Amazon wants to catch up with, uh, you know, Facebook and Google for ad dollars as well. So, yeah, yeah. so if they can make this service available to more, then they're going to grow faster. So that's the trend that we're seeing. Yeah, yeah it's sort of MCC model as they have in Google. So everything is. In yeah. Uh, yeah, it's all included. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think for people who already um, advertising on, say, sponsored products ads or sponsored brand ads, for them, what you know, is it something uh, easier to set up, or there is a lot of investment in terms of doing research? Uh, how do how do we kickstart so uh, DSP campaigns? Well, I think. Um, Regarding sort of kickstarting the DSP campaigns, there's a number of steps that you can sort of walk through. Yeah. Um, and I think, but I think it's important that I just pause and just describe what the difference between the two platforms are, so yeah. we're, we're clear. Um, pay per click or AMS, which still lots of people call it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which we all know it really. Let's face it that way. Um, it's basically at the end point, it's you're targeting the consumers at the point of intent. You know, I, I want to buy that toothpaste, for example. I'm searching yeah. for teeth whitening toothpaste or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, you can target the person at, at the intent of, of purchase. But it's very hard to target people higher up the funnel, you know, that may be in the market or considering or researching the market. Uh, because you just don't know then that, that person might be wanting you know the toothpaste for example but they might be searching around Amazon or, or surfing the web about you know hair care products or whatever it may be yeah and they're not at that point of intent on Amazon so you, you can't you know with your AMS platform you can't see them touch them sort of target them in any way yes but they could potentially buy your product but they're not aware of it so mm -hmm. uh, Demand side platform allows you to target people at the point of consideration and raise awareness. Okay. Uh, or maybe someone in the market for your products. Um, so a good example that I use is to say with, within travel, uh, you know, you want to target someone with um, sun cream, but someone in the market for sun cream might be buying uh, suitcase, neck, neck pillows, you know, yes. other travel related products that you could target. So they'll be maybe shopping within the market for higher up the funnel. Okay. So D DSP allows you to access those people and start filling your funnel mm -hmm. and work nicely alongside your AMS. So if I've got um, a brand and creative for your brand that I'm not aware of before, but if I can see that, I might, I might actually start branding search on Amazon for your product. Okay. Because I've seen it before, so it just start filling up your AMS funnel as well. Um, for, for example, so it's, um, they work very well in in conjunction with each other. So, you know, your campaigns in AMS may be working really well, and you've got an efficient ACOS, but your you know your revenue is increasing slowly. It's possibly because there's less brand awareness off the platform. So DSP is a good way of sort of filling that funnel and accelerating growth as well. Okay. Um, and just to answer your original question is, you know, how can I access or build the, the steps for that? Yeah. Is uh, DSP also allowed you to remarket uh, in a similar way you would do with like Facebook, for example, if people land on your website, you can set up a pixel to remarket people. Yes. So you can either remarket visitors to your own website or people that have perhaps viewed your products. Mm -hmm 
or, or even past purchased your product as well. So be able to target lapsed consumers, which is, you know, in, in our uh, business is very important for grocery and healthcare products because yeah. if someone stopped buying your Hill Farm oils, for example, yeah. uh, you want to be able to retarget them and get them buying again. Um, so that's so allow you to do that as well. So, so be able to target people up, up the funnel and build, build from there. Yeah. And uh, what sort of metrics do we see uh, through your DSP campaigns? Um, well, you know, typically, you know, if you're looking at um, ACOS, for example, to, for it to be as effective as, as uh, you know, at, at the point of consideration would be unrealistic, but I'd say, you know, you're looking between sort of 30 to 40% okay. um, conversion. That's all the way through the funnel, bear in mind, closer to, you know, people that have viewed your products and laps that are going to have a lot, much lower cost per acquisition. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, higher up the funnel, is, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost you more, but you're, you know, you're building awareness as well. So um, I think to manage expectations with clients is important yes. about the actual return for DSP, but it's overall messaging is, is, is in, you know, the, the overall uh, awareness uh, for your product and driving demand later, later down the funnel is important. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Understood. So um, we've got something with uh, sponsor display ads, right? Um, within our EMS now. Uh, as as a sponsor, as you know, sponsor display ads, you, you target mm -hmm. customer within Amazon. Um, now, is it something that is working together with DSP or uh, is it a you know, smaller version of DSP, do you think? I think it, it it's it's starting to sort of blur the lines between the two. Um, yes. Uh, display ads. Uh, there's there's very little, you know, metrics you can sort of change and optimize for sponsored display ads, isn't it? Essentially, sort of like bidding levels. Yes. Um, so it isn't anywhere as sophisticated as DSP, where you can actually. Uh, test and refine different types of in-market audience or demographics mm -hmm. um, so it has more flexibility okay. but I think that's it's almost like the first it's almost like the um, what we call product attribute targeting in our agency or, or category targeting it's that start that's almost like the first run of, of DSP within that mm -hmm. funnel so it's broadening out the funnel from, from, from AMS basically okay all right excellent so I think um, I think it would be good to. Is there any other tips with with regards to DSP um, for people who are listening today? Yeah, I think tips wise is um, you know we mentioned the funnel when we first started talking, didn't we? It's, um, yes. Is to well whether you're working with a managed uh, service within Amazon or agencies, or actually ask them to okay, let's have a, a layered approach to the funnel. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's such vast data sets that you're going to be targeting and to a certain degree the larger the audience the better the algorithm works in DSP to start with so don't try too narrow when you're going higher up the funnel it doesn't work as well it prefers a larger data set but when you're starting low at the bottom of the funnel is we're saying actually to optimize that first okay because as you're building that layer up you're essentially driving traffic down the funnel so if the bottom's optimized as you're building then you're going to get progressively more and more effective rather yeah. than trying to do everything all at once would be my key key point another thing is um you know there's so many different metrics uh, you could target um for for dsp that essentially you you want to be able to use as much intel that you have on your client has um as possible about the demographic target demographics Okay. So it may be that you could look at your Google demographics and on your e-commerce site and get an idea of the best performing demographics that are actually buying your products. Yes. Be okay. a good starting point. Yeah. Uh, what you can also do is add um, email lists and also a pixel to your website mm -hmm. from DSP to then pull in data, so on Amazon's platform to create overlap audiences, so Amazon can go look at the people that are buying and go, here's, here's, 
here's the uh, a lookalike audience or here's the best performing audience within oh, wow. Amazon it gives you a, 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 a targeting metric that said something that Amazon won't mention to you is what are they doing with that data so if your client has a, a significant web channel are Amazon using that data to you know optimize their own marketing efforts I don't know I'm, I don't work for Amazon but that'd yeah. be one question that you know, yeah. my, my, my head of IT would be asking, for example. Yeah. So just, just to be aware. D, uh, um, GDPR as well. Mm -hmm. It'd probably be another question you need to be aware of around, regarding you know, clients. If I'm passing my email list, now Amazon have a, plat, uh, a, a portal where you can provide a link to the client and they can upload the list and it's hashed in, yeah. in Amazon's back end, yeah. like yeah. Facebook do, would do with a lookalike audience, you know, with the Facebook advertising. But you know that's something to, to be aware of. But you know, more the more data you have to make informed decisions, I'm always the opinion that the, the better your marketing is going to be. So that's you know, if, if you have that before you're building up your audience, then um, that's something that's going to work really well for you. And um, yeah, I think um, you know, building up from the bottom end of the funnel, look at retargeting, and then also contextual. So the next layer would be. Um, looking at competitor conquest, as, as we call it, um, okay. you know, who's viewing similar products, can we retarget those okay. and steal market share mm -hmm. and then going higher up. So looking at who's in the market to buy the products. Right. So whether it be people buying, you know, in the pet supplement example, mm -hmm. buying senior dog food, for example, mm -hmm. um, maybe dog it's pets, pet accessories and what have you like that. So you can look at pet supplies category that are shopping in that to target them and then building up the demographics as well so age uh amazon can, it pulls back data as age whether you're married or not uh, approximation of income other interests that you're interested in wow. uh so um yeah so you can really sort of build up that funnel uh i was sat in a meeting with one client which i won't tell them they do but they they had a very clear definition about their, their audience being female within a certain age range. Okay. Uh, and all these interests. And Amazon came back and went, out of the 250,000 people that bought your products last year, here's, here's your actual demographic. Half of them were men. Uh, and a lot of them were actually uh, either pregnant or nesting or thinking about it. That was the women, of course. Yeah. Um, and also um, a large proportion of likes eating granola as well. Oh wow! So, <laughs> so, so you know the um, you know the marketing director's look on his face was just like, wow, it's like so much data you pulled back to you know. Play. But you know, obviously, when you're looking at what different audiences we're going to target, you can start burning through cash quite quickly. So, mm -hmm. it goes back to my original point of if you have some good intel, then you can start making you know better informed decisions. Yeah. Uh, higher up the funnel. Of course as well from there and then once you've got those big market and, and uh demographic audiences you know you're feeling confident as to those then you can open up the publisher network and start targeting people on mass mm -hmm. as well um so you can start to drive some serious traffic into amazon to your targeted customers basically so um does that make sense Hopefully yeah so. yeah yeah i, I think yeah. i think it makes perfect sense and um Thanks for sharing all the tips and and, mm. and and more information about it. And I'm sure it's it's been it will be useful for anybody listening to this. Um, mm. So if somebody wants to find you, get uh, and ask some questions, but what's the best place to go to? Um, I'm trying to, trying to get <laughs> Google Marketplace app. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, and I'm on, I'm available on LinkedIn as well. But certainly, yeah, if you want to, um, you know, fire that over. Um, I'm on Twitter, so Mr. Matt Anderson or at Marketplace Amp on Twitter. Um, sure. uh, so feel free to sort of fire any questions over and um, carry on the conversation. Okay, excellent. So, yeah, so thank you very much, Matt. Um, so, for, so thank you very much for everyone who will be listening as well. So we'll be uh, doing another uh, recording again, continue with AMS with Matt again, and I'll invite you then. So thanks. Uh, thanks, everyone. Bye for now.